Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. For 50 years, ever since President Richard Nixon lifted the veil and opened the door to communist China, American presidents spoke harshly but carried a soft stick on China, allowing this growing global superpower to accumulate more and more power and control until Donald Trump came along and flipped the script challenging our adversary on tariffs, trade, intellectual property theft, and consummating an agreement which was supposed to be the start of a more grand, or critics would say protectionist, reform of our relationship with China. So what happens now that the famously pro-China Joe Biden has landed in the Oval Office? Joining us to consider that question and others relating to the Biden view of the world is the man we turn to on all things defense and military and national security related, LibertyNation.com's Dave Patterson, back in the saddle after a time away. Welcome back, Dave Patterson. Hey, thank you, Tim. It's great to be back with you. It is great to have you now. Dave, reading the tea leaves as best you can, what do you see as the fundamental change from Trump to Biden in terms of our approach to China? Is it likely to simply be a return to the decades before Trump? Or did the Trump approach to China make it harder for Biden to return to business as usual? Well, I think as the old saying goes, you know, a leopard doesn't change its spots. And we know that the Obama administration uh, was very cordial to China, as were uh, other administrations, in hopes that they would curry China's favor as far as a trading partner was concerned. But, and I suspect the uh, Biden administration will uh, take that exact same course. What would distinguish the Biden administration from the Trump administration was that I believe President Trump very quickly realized that what he thought at the beginning of his administration was not what he thought at the end, and that China was very focused on Chinese uh, hegemony throughout the globe, both military and economic. We have ample evidence of that. But let's move on to Russia for a moment. It was famously viewed by the left as the opposite of China as aligned with Trump. They spent two years accusing Trump uh, of actually colluding with the Russians to steal the 2016 election. So with that backdrop, how are things likely to change in our relationship with Russia, especially in light of Vladimir Putin's iron-fisted crackdown on the supporters of the political enemy of his that he threw into jail? Tim, I think that Overall, what we have is a, is a misconception. We like to make things simple in our foreign policy, and we lump Russia and China into the same bucket as uh, adversaries. They are two totally different approaches to the world. The Russians are more of a blunt force and uh, uh, will attempt to do things by overt hacking and trying to influence things both in the United States and elsewhere throughout the world. And they have the advantage, though, of having 1,550 nuclear warheads where China does not. China, on the the other hand, is attempting to influence things economically across with their uh, one belt, one road approach to uh, their influence. Also, you may read quite frequently that they are extremely mischievous in the South China Sea and, uh, and, and very belligerent toward their neighbors, which uh, causes the United States some alarm as well. Now, Donald Trump also challenged our NATO allies as never before to live up to their commitments to the common defense of Western Europe and North America. And they're likely relieved that Trump is not around anymore. But what is the return of the ultimate establishment politician to the Oval Office portend for our relationship with Europe and Britain? Oh, I think that uh, the Biden administration is going to be a much kinder and gentler uh, uh, ally with our European allies. I think that uh, they will take a much uh, softer approach uh, handling them now with kid gloves. 
there's a, a belief within the uh, liberal and progressives that uh, you will always get a, your way eventually uh, by showing them that you're conciliatory and you're kind and you want to be a good ally. Uh, that has never worked, actually. And uh, one of the things I think you can take a certain amount of uh, comfort in is that when President Trump took a hard line on the 2% uh, contribution to defense uh, by the NATO allies. The first person to come on board in support of him was the Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg. And uh, he, he too was interested in NATO allies carrying their fair share of defense. David, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here, Tim. Always a pleasure. I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Mark Angelides, Sarah Cowgill, Tim Donner, and Scott Cosenza, and this is your vacation. Now let's take a look at the LibertyNation.com electoral leaderboard. It's still 238 for Joe Biden. What if stories and legends can offer us the key to unraveling the hottest political issues of the day and apply their lessons to understanding the chaos of modern politics? Impeach 45! Only where freedom of speech is honored can people who look, sound, or think differently be truly free. If you're discussing something that's difficult, the probability that you're not going to offend each other is zero. President-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump is now president. With one click, Liberty, Liberty Nation delivers tomorrow's news. And remember, Liberty. Today. All the time and everywhere. LibertyNation.com.